Uh, so we're really looking forward uh, to sharing a little bit more detail with you about what our two teams have been, uh, been building together. So as we go through the demo here, we're really going to highlight uh, three key things. The first is we want to show you how simple and fast we've made it to enable an entire VMware environment on the AWS cloud. The second thing we want to show you is not only does that bring all the great enterprise class capabilities of VMware to the AWS cloud, uh, but also by linking it to a customer's existing on-prem environment, we can provide a common control plane across those two worlds that enables a whole set of new powerful uh, hybrid use cases. And then the third thing we're going to show is how uh, our joint customers can then connect uh, the rich portfolio of AWS services into this VMware cloud environment, enabling a whole new case of powerful use cases. So let's go to the demo. All right, uh, so what you see here is the landing page uh, for VMware Cloud on AWS. And just like any other cloud service, we've made it really uh, simple and fast to get started. So let's, uh, let's create our first VMware Cloud. All right, uh, so now you see we can choose uh, which AWS region we'd like to deploy this VMware Cloud service. So AWS has a very broad geographic reach. We have a very broad footprint, which stretches over 13 different geographic regions. And we have five more coming online over the course of the next year. And each of these regions isn't just a simple data center. It's actually collections of data centers, which are grouped in what we call availability zones, which are redundantly powered, redundantly connected, and a minimum distance apart. And that allows our customers and platforms like the VMware Cloud on AWS to build entirely fault-tolerant, and high-performance environments. Great. Uh, so now let's uh, see how easy it is to take advantage of this. Uh, let's imagine that we're an enterprise customer that wants to expand their operations into Europe, but they don't have a data center there yet. So let's uh, go ahead and click uh, the Ireland region of AWS to get started. That seems like a good place to go. Good and let's go, uh, let's go ahead here. The next thing we have to do is uh, pick how much resources do we want to make available in this, uh, this environment. We have a lot of choice and flexibility here. Obviously, it's a cloud service. But to keep it simple, uh, let's get started by picking one of the recommended t-shirt sizes of four hosts. And uh, now we need to choose how we'd like to consume and pay for this uh, service. Again, just like any other AWS uh, cloud service, we can choose hourly on demand, or we can choose a one or three year reserve. And of course, the customer only has to pay for what they're actually consuming. So we'll, uh, for now, we'll pick hourly on demand. And then, of course, we need to decide how we want to pay for it. Uh, an easy way to get started is paying through a credit card. But one of the really powerful things about this service is that because it's delivered, sold, and supported by VMware, our customers can take advantage of their existing commercial relationships with VMware uh, to purchase this service, as well as they can take advantage of their existing relationships with uh, certified channel partners. So uh, let's select that option here since we have that set up and uh, go next. Excellent. So now you see uh, sort of the configuration here. Pretty straightforward. Let's, uh, let's go ahead. I agree. And let's create our first VMware Cloud. So here you see uh, the VMware Cloud on AWS getting spun up uh, in Ireland. So uh, to share a little bit about what's going on behind the scenes here, let's go back to the slides. So what's really important for customers that are currently running VMware on-premises but want to take advantage of the full suite of services on AWS is that they're able to use exactly the same tools, functions, and features that they're used to inside the cloud. So it's really important that we're able to bring the full VMware stack, vSphere, vSAN, NSX, and their own um, uh, hypervisor running natively on bare metal instances on AWS. This provides all the features that customers love about VMware with all of the elasticity and security that customers have come to expect from AWS. Great. So our joint customers are really going to enjoy taking advantage of those, uh, those capabilities you just described. So let's go, let's go back to the demo here. And uh, you can see now that the VMware Cloud on the Ireland uh, region on AWS has been created, right? So literally in the matter of a few clicks and a few minutes, we were able to spin up the entire environment that Matt described, the complete VMware SCDC stack uh, on the AWS Cloud in Ireland. Um, so incredibly fast, incredibly simple. Now let's go see uh, what we can do with this thing. So let's, uh, let's go into vCenter. Uh, for those of you that may not be aware, uh, vCenter is the tool of choice for hundreds of thousands of VMware customers uh, around the world. They use it to manage their on-prem VMware environments today. And uh, here you can see in, in vCenter, if you look at the left pane, uh, you can see the Ireland VMware Cloud and AWS we just created. You can also see some uh, previous environments we created as well. And uh, if you go to the right here, what you can see is uh, this is not just a management tool. This actually is the entire VMware SCDC software stack running on AWS, as, as Matt referenced. So ESXi, 
uh, vSAN for storage, uh, NSX for networking, and of course all the enterprise uh, capabilities of those products, whether it's NSX microsegmentation or vSAN flash, uh, flash storage. So uh, our customers now have the ability to get all of those great capabilities on the, on the AWS cloud. Uh, but what really makes this exciting is not only can they do that directly on the AWS cloud, but now they can link that environment uh, back into their on-prem data center. And so if you look at the left-hand panel here again, uh, you'll see uh, we've got a Denver data center. So this is a customer's on-prem uh, environment. And uh, you can see this all in a single logical view. Right? So this is really powerful. This is what enables all of those hybrid use cases that Pat and some of the customers were, were talking about. They can treat this as a single logical uh, instance. So um, enables many powerful hybrid capabilities, but uh, to show, we'll just show one, uh, one here to get started. So in this case, this customer has decided that they would like to uh, move one of their uh, applications from their own private cloud into the AWS cloud. Uh, and if you look here in, the, in their uh, data center, they've got a bunch of apps, obviously, and they've decided to move this ETL service uh, over. So we'll click on that service, uh, and you can see that, uh, of course, this VM has all these policies already created. It's part of a few NSX microsegments. Uh, it's leveraging v, uh, vSAN high IOP storage. And um, now we want to basically move that application to, uh, to the VMware Cloud on AWS. So uh, to do this, we're going to use a feature called vMotion. Uh, again, vMotion is a very popular feature in vSphere. It enables stateful movement of applications across servers or across, uh, across data centers. Uh, so we're going to sort of click through the uh, little wizard here. Uh, you'll see we're going to uh, choose to move it to the uh, VMware Cloud in, uh, in Oregon, and we'll select that cluster. Uh, we're going to say we want to keep the storage policies the same. Again, we want to make sure it's got great high-performance storage on AWS. We want to keep the network uh, and security policies the same. We want to uh, make it happen right now. And uh, let's click Finish. So what you're seeing here now on the bottom is vMotion is actually just moving that application uh, to the AWS cloud. And uh, you know, not only is it moving that application without requiring any replatforming of the application or uh, the customer having to write a single new line of code, but because it's using vMotion, it's actually continuing to provide service to the end customer, the end consumer, literally why it's moving. And of course, all of those policies we talked about before are maintained. So uh, let's uh, share a little bit more about uh, how this works. Let's go back to the slide. Great. So we've, uh, we've built this out here. And basically what you can see is the way we've enabled this is we've leveraged uh, great technologies from both uh, AWS and VMware. We're sitting on top of AWS uh, Direct Connect. And then on the VMware side, we've actually linked the two vCenter environments together, as well as stretched the network through NSX. And this is what fundamentally is enabling not just that uh, hybrid use case that we showed, but all the rich portfolio of things that we talked about uh, before. Um, so uh, what this basically showed you is you know, everything that a customer can do with a VMware environment on-prem today, they can now do uh, in uh, a VMware Cloud environment on AWS. Uh, incredibly powerful. Uh, but it gets uh, even better than that. I think, uh, you know, as Pat referenced earlier, the teams are uh, working closely together to think about, hey, what are some uh, new and even more powerful things we can do together as we bring these uh, solutions uh, closer and closer together? So uh, let's go to the next slide. Uh, so another great feature people uh, love about uh, vSphere is called DRS, Distributed Resource Scheduler. Basically what it does is automatically rebalance workloads across a cluster of servers to optimize performance and, and utilization. Uh, but what happens when we run out of capacity? Right, so here we're, saying, we're showing the customers overloaded. Uh, the, the, sorry, the server's overloaded. So uh, what we've done is uh, created a new net new capability uh, that we're showing a technology preview of called Elastic DRS. And what this does is it takes advantage of the fact that the infrastructure underneath DRS from AWS is now elastic. And so what you can see here is uh, we've turned it on and uh, we've automatically spun up a new uh, server. DRS is kicking in, automatically rebalancing those workloads. Literally, we've taken something that used to take weeks or a month in a traditional on-prem environment now to a few uh, minutes based on a policy on top of uh, the great AWS cloud. So uh, with that, let's go back to the slides. Great, so the last thing we want to, to talk about is, of course, the other thing that our joint customers really want to take advantage of is the incredible portfolio of services that AWS offers and be able to uh, get access to those seamlessly into this new uh, VMware cloud environment. 
That's right. So one of the things that customers love most about AWS is the broad and deep set of functionality that they can take advantage of across over 70 different cloud services. And with the VMs that are running on the VMware cloud on AWS being on EC2, they can take advantage of all of these services because they're, they're right next door. So if they want to access data which is stored in the simple storage service, if they want to run queries against an enterprise-grade data warehouse, if they want to be able to run relational and non-relational low latency um, databases, all of that is wrapped up and available in the AWS cloud. So what we've been able to do here is take all of the best parts of VMware, take them and run them natively on AWS with the VMware cloud on AWS, allow hybrid integrations with existing on-premises uh, infrastructure, as well as bringing the best of AWS with this broad and deep set of functionality. We can't wait to see what customers will take advantage of this. And with that, I'll hand it back to Pat and Andy. Thanks a lot.